Hello everyone. Welcome back to Calm War Room. Today, we have a video with 7 tips that will massively improve your gameplay when applied. Whether you're a seasoned veteran or a fresh recruit, these strategies will elevate your gameplay to the next level. Let's dive right in. Tip number one is the power of demolition. Sometimes, it's not just about construction, it's about destruction. This strategy of demolishing buildings is an amazing way to gain free resources and possibly help you win a war. Let's find out how. Firstly, demolishing buildings in occupied enemy cities will give you free resources. For example, if I destroy this army base in Zaragoza, it should give me free resources. And as you can see, it gave me free resources in my resource tab. And there is no cost for this. You are simply destroying a building in an enemy city that you are hyper unlikely to use. Additionally, demolishing buildings can also help you win a war. For example here I captured Zaragoza which has an army base where he can automatically produce infantry. Let's say that I don't demolish the buildings and that Spain captures the city back. This would mean that when he occupies the city he is able to automatically build units and he will have to spend lower resources on repairing the buildings. However, if you destroyed the building before he occupied it back, then you, you would have firstly gained free resources, and if you wanted to mobilize units or have a better economy, he would have to build those buildings all over again. Great! The second tip is to avail diplomacy and form alliances. Surviving in the world of conflict of nations requires more than just military. If you are being social in the map or by simply creating alliances will massively boost your chances of winning the game. For example, instead of fighting the best players in the map, you can form a coalition with them and take the win. Not only is diplomacy important in late game stages, it is also important in early game stages. For example, if you start a game in a continent such as Europe and you don't talk with other nations, then your chances of survival will massively decrease and you will most likely be attacked from all sides. In conclusion, it is critical to be social on the map to avoid being overwhelmed by enemies from all sides. Perfect. Tip number three is to level up your arms industries to increase your economic production. Throughout the game, you want focus on leveling up arms industries, which will level up your economy. Additionally, you should focus on leveling up the arms industries in the cities that produce the resources you lack. For example, here playing as Germany, we can see that we have a low of production of electronics. Therefore, I want to focus on leveling up the arm industry in Leipzig because it produces the resource I'm lacking. Having a maxed industry will give you an extra 50% of resources in that city. Leveling up your arms industries will not only boost your economic production, but it also ensures a steady supply of resources for your expanding empire. Tip 4. Tip 4 is to buy the Security Council. This is genuinely the only purchase that is worth it in the game, and it will help you in the long term. Buying the game Security Council will open up to you exclusive elite units, which tend to be some of the best units in the game, and without Security Council they can't be unlocked. Additionally, it also opens up features such as fire control, rally points, build queuing, no inactivity replacements, and a lot more. Overall, having these perks and applying them will really enhance your gameplay. Great! Tip number five is to expand, expand, expand. Don't fall into the trap of focusing on just one border for expansion. Instead, spread your expansion across all your borders and control strategically to avoid surprise attacks. A well-rounded expansion plan ensures the safety of your capital and homeland cities. If you do not expand through all your borders, north, west, south, and east, then you leave yourself vulnerable to neighboring nations, giving them the ability to take your homeland cities and capital overnight. You want to avoid making this common but deadly mistake by simply expanding in every direction possible. Perfect. Tip number six is to avail the use of espionage. Espionage is a crucial tool for gaining the upper hand in war. It can stop the enemy from mobilizing units, it can get you resources, and it also gives you intelligence on the enemy. Additionally, by using intelligence you can find if someone is planning to go to war with you or possibly even about to backstab you. You can also use it to find what units the enemy is building and then make counters against those units. For example, if the enemy is building helicopters, then you can proceed to build air superiority fighters. 
Another amazing strategy you can use is to sabotage the enemy airfields, because if the airfields are successfully sabotaged then the planes or helicopters in that airfield will be stuck and can't leave. Giving you the amazing benefit of destroying all the enemy's air force in one. You should also be stationing counter ops agents in your homeland cities to stop your opponents from using this against you. Perfect. Now let's dive into tip 7. This tip is very little spoken about but exceptionally effective. And it is to avoid the deadly grip of anti-air. You may be thinking that is not possible. Well it is. With this trick you can avoid your helicopters or air force from taking damage of the enemy's anti-air unit attack. To do this all you have to do is employ your patrol option as shown here and leave the patrol circle just slightly touching the enemy's units. As you can see the enemy's anti-air won't engage the range where my planes are going. This way your air force hits the enemy unit without the anti-air attack engaging. There you have it, commanders. 7 Powerful Tips to Dominate Conflict of Nations, World War III If you found these tips helpful, a like and subscribe would be much appreciated. Good luck!